Today I'll be restoring an old, leather, winged-back, tufted chair. I'll be using it as my office chair in the farmhouse. We got it at a local antique shop for only about $110. It's seen better days, but I'm pretty sure with the right tools, the right technique, and a little love, we could bring this back to its glory days. I sped the video up for your convenience, but I think you'll get the gist. I'm going to start by removing the bottom of the chair. This will give us access to the extra material left over from the manufacturing process, which we're going to need to repair any rips or holes or even the broken tufts. So we just cut out a piece each time that we need during the repair process. It's the exact leather, so it's perfect for your needs. But first we're going to have to remove these tacks just using a flathead screwdriver and a pair of pliers you can remove each one carefully making sure you don't bend or break them because we are going to put them back later so once all the tacks are removed we're ready to fix the tear take the piece of leather you cut before and carefully tuck it underneath the rip making sure it lays perfectly flat and centered under the hole. Now take some tack glue that you can get at Walmart or any craft store and liberally apply it on the top and bottom making sure you get it especially near the edges of the tears. This does dry clear so you don't have to get too fussy if you get it in the wrong place. Once you have good coverage you want to slowly massage the leather in pulling it back over top of the patch. Then take a damp sponge and slowly massage out the excess. Now take something flat and heavy and press everything making sure you get good adhesion and let it sit for about an hour. Now you're ready to put back the tacks. Carefully tap each one in. They are pretty fragile so make sure you go straight and steady and if you go too high or too low you can massage it back and forth because they are pretty pliable and just follow the old indentations to know that you're on the right track okay well now we can move on to the broken tufting you can see that the holes are so big that a button wouldn't hold there so the same process as before, we need to make a backer. Make sure it's laid nice and flat. Take your time. Once we get them both in there, same process with the tack glue. Now once I'm done with this step, I am going to let it dry overnight because we're going to be using tufting buttons to pull the leather down. It's important that we have good adhesion. So again, following the same process, clean up any extra and massage down the patch. Don't forget to dry it off and let sit overnight. Now we're going to address all of the cracking and fading of the chair. We're going to use standard Kiwi Brown shoe polish and massage into the chair using circular motions. Make sure you keep material on your cloth at all times. If you find that you're putting it on too thick, you can rub it around and buff it out. As you can see, it's pretty much disappearing in front of your eyes. They do make expensive liquids and all kinds of different gels that leather manufacturers sell, but I find that shoe polish does the trick just fine.
Once you have pretty good coverage, flip the rag over, take the clean side, and buff out any heavy spots. Okay, now the fun part with the tufting. I just made a needle out of a shish kebab skewer. I drilled a little needle hole in the end of it in order to thread the top of it. Saved me about 12 bucks on a long needle. So I'm just going down through the tufting hole. It's a little tough at first, but it goes through. And that pulls the thread down to the bottom, as you can see. Pull that out, pull enough, and then pull your shish kebab skewer back out. Now we're going to take some off, cut it, and thread the tufting button back on. And repeat the process so you can have both down below to tie off. So take out your second one, pull the skewer out, and now that gives you both the pull down on that button. You want to pull it evenly so that it has the same indentation approximately as the rest of them. Once you find that level, tie it off. Give it a couple ties, make sure it's secure, and cut off the excess. And the hard part's over. The next step is we're going to use some saddle soap to clean the leather and start to condition it. Same process as the shoe polish with a wet rag. It's almost going to be a little sudsy when you put it on. Wax on, wax off. It's fun to watch it come to life right in front of our eyes. You will do the whole chair, I just did the seat in the video. Now the next step is to use conditioning oil. This is what's going to bring the moisture back to leather and make it last years to come. Same process, except once you have it on, you want to come back with a dry rag and rub all the remainder off. Look at that leather shine. Once you clean it off, let it dry for 24 hours before sitting in it. Give it time to penetrate. And for the last step, we have fixed the bottom. Using a stapler, carefully move around, make sure it's out of sight, fold the corners in, making sure everything stays taut. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed restoring this beautiful piece of furniture. I'm so grateful for everyone who makes videos on YouTube, so I figured I would make one. And hopefully with this new farmhouse, there'll be many more to come. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.